Victor Wembanyama is our number one player on the 24 under 24 in 24 list. And the first word, I, the first sentence I say here in the little mini <laughs> breakdown that we do on YouTube is has a chance to break basketball. We've just never seen somebody that is seven foot four, this coordinated, this capable of, you know, handling the ball at that size, this capable of creating mismatches at such a high level. Someone who is this good defensively, uh, it's such an early age and like the physical tools we've just never seen somebody with this set of physical tools, right? Seven foot four with an eight foot wingspan and real body control, like the body control of a wing. Like this is like, if you gave Boban, like the body control of a wing <laughs> and the ability to dribble and pass and shoot, it's comical, right? Like this is, this is something we have never seen before. Yeah. in Victor Wembanyama and it's it's hard to have anybody other than him at number 1 even just the way he played in the gold medal match for France right i would say for the first 3 quarters he was maybe the best player on the court yep. against that team USA team he is almost an impossibility to me it doesn't make sense like some of the things he's capable of on the court he's competitive he wants to win. Like he has all of those things as well. I think I talked about this when we talked about that game. My friend texts me, and goes, Man, Victor, I think it was probably during the third quarter before Steph went crazy and some of the other stuff happened. But he's like, Vic's the best player on the court right now. And he's so young, one year in the NBA, the skill level. I'm sure we'll talk about some things we'd like to see get a little bit better, but he's probably he, he's probably gonna win how many defensive player of the year? And it can start next season. And then this ultimately comes down to like where he lands to me comes down to what the offensive game ends up being. Like, does he really shoot it? Does he really pass it? Does he figure out where his spots are? How does he get to him to really be like that hub of an offense? And, you know, if he's scoring 28 a night on this type of defense, that's a multi-time MVP over and over. And like, that's, that's the only place I wonder, I don't want to say I have questions. I just wonder, does he get to that level of scoring, passing offense, like primary offensive usage? Cause I have no questions whatsoever about the defense. I think he's going to average 25 a game this year. So like, I think that's coming. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he averages like 25, 11 and like, you know, Probably, honestly, like he might stagnate in terms of assists this year because they have Chris Paul and like they have a real point guard like for the full game this year. Uh, and I think that's where his game can stand to grow, right? Is he could stand to grow as a passer and decision maker on offense. But I mean, look, he's going to be a high volume scorer who's a mismatch nightmare on the block, who is capable of picking and popping from three, who can take you off the bounce and drive and finish at the rim again, like every capability of being a three level scorer in his own way. Right. Um, you know, we'll be able to drive and finish. We'll be able to pick and pop from three. We'll be able to, you know, have a mid post game where he'll shoot over the top of everybody. Right. The defense is insane. The, the way he impacts the game on defense to where like, Teams just don't go in there Yep. when he's the primary center. That's what completely changed the Spurs season. They tried to play like Zach Collins at the center position next to Victor early on for like the first 20 games. If you remove the first 20 games of the season to when they moved Victor like down to the center position full time and said like, hey, like just protect the rim. They were like a top 10-ish, I think, defense in the league like right around there, despite having been the 22nd overall defense throughout the course of the season. As soon as they actualized Victor, like in the right spot, he's supposed to play and just said, Hey, play drop coverage, stay around the rim. Like it, it was almost impossible to score on them on the interior. Like if you look at his on off numbers defensively, they like completely blow you away. Yeah. No, and that's what it, 
I think that's the number that stands out, or I guess it's not a number, but that's what stands out when you watch even more than the numbers is how many shots he deters or guys just don't shoot at all. Or like the thing we can't even see or wait at all is what is a player's mindset going into that game in general? Like, I would love to know mm -hmm. the number, like take a look at a team's three point attempts on average, and then what they shoot how many three-point attempts they take against the Spurs specifically when Wimby's on the court. And just like, I wonder how much higher that rate is, if it is, because they're just like, you know what? I'm going to take this three. It's a little bit contested, but even if I attack this closeout, I got to dribble into Victor Wimbanyama, and that ain't going to work anyway. So I might as well just take this contested three or partially contested three. And those just aren't things you can measure the mindset of a team going into a game. So that's what I said. Like defensively, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I would anticipate him winning defensive player of the year this year because they're going to win some more games, I think, with, you know, Chris Paul and they added Harrison Barnes. You know, obviously Vassell is there, you, you know, Steph Castle. And who knows how good he looks offensively with a real point guard, ideally, theoretically, all season long. Like, remember, they played a lot of, we talked about the Jeremy Sohan thing, you know, quite a bit on this podcast as well. And I think that experiment is over. So offensively, just getting him the ball in the right spots, because I do think that that mid-range, mid-post isolation is where he could really, really do a lot of work in terms of isolation basketball. Victor Wembanyama in the post-All-Star break portion of the season played 22 games. When he was on the court, that a 108.6 defensive rating. That would be number one in the league this past season. Uh, that is better than the Timberwolves number at 109. Uh, when he was on the court, Victor was so dominant on defense that it is just completely and utterly absurd. He he was so, so good on that end of the court, blocking shots, but also just deterring shots. He's capable of like switching occasionally. And like, you know, at the end of the day, he's so long that he just recovers all over the place. Uh, it's just really hard to fully beat him. Uh, you're right. The offense is, you know, what will determine what he is, right? Uh, that will determine what he is on like an all-time great list to me. Uh, th the question for me with Victor is like, is he genuinely going to be like one of the like five best players to ever play basketball? Yeah. Yep. That That is truly what the ceiling is if it all breaks right, even if he doesn't hit that ceiling, it's hard for me to imagine a world based off of his talent alone where he's not a top 40 player of all time. He's that good. Like he's that good already. He's that good on defense. He's that skilled offensively. If the frame holds up in any way, it is very difficult to see a world where he's like, even if he doesn't like get all that much better, it's hard to see how he doesn't hit that level. I mean, so that's what I wonder. I don't anticipate this to happen. So what four people have or three people, Dikembe, Ben Wallace, and Gobert have won it three times. Defensive player. He's going to win. More, he's going to win more than three defensive so, players. So that's where I was getting. Let's say he doesn't get any better offensively, Sam. Let's say he averages 24 assists on these shooting numbers, whatever. What is the all-time defense with what we think he's going to be defensively, even if he doesn't get better offensively? If he does this and wins five defensive player of the year awards. There, yeah. Top what, 30 player of all time. Yeah. Right. And that's if the offense doesn't really improve that much because offensively he's already better than the three guys I named. Yes. The Bay, Ben and Rudy. That's what's insane about this. Yeah. That's like what is impossibly ridiculous about the Victor Wembenyama conversation. He's already so good. Like we just need him to stay healthy. That's the reality. We just yep. need need him to stay healthy. Um, you know, I, I hope he does. You know, he played seventy plus games this year. He'll play, you know, 
hopefully that many again next year and for the next 10 years of his career. But, you know, he's just very thin. And we hope that this frame continues to hold up. Yep. My final question on Victor for you is, what does he average this year? And does he finish top 10 in MVP? And if he does, where? So 21 points last year on 47. 30, I will say he averages 23.5 this season. So a jump, but not a major jump. Wins defensive player of the year and finishes not in the top five. Let's go eight in MVP. Yeah, I'm going to say he is 25, 11, and four. Okay. Slightly better field goal percentage. So, like, right around like 50% field goal percentage. Okay. Right around the same from three, right around the same from the line, like 80% from the line. Finishes top two in defense player of the year, probably wins defense player of the year, or whatever. And finishes sixth in MVP. Top five, top six, something like that. Is the only reason you're holding back from first team all NBA is because you don't think the Spurs will win enough games to warrant that? Yes. Same. I think they win like what what did they win last year? They won like, you know, twenty two or whatever, something like that, maybe. Twenty two exactly, yeah. Um I think they win like thirty five this year. Yeah. And like somebody could say, well, like even if they win 40, that doesn't even get you into the play in in the West last year. So it's if like, they win, if they win 40, he's top five in MVP. Okay. If they, if they literally almost double their win total, it's because he's one of the five best players in the league. I would be interested to know how many players have been first team all NBA on losing records. That'd be a fun. Yeah, stat. I would too. That'd be a fun. That'd stat be very know. interesting. Yeah. That'd be very interesting. 